this just in. Stay tuned at the end of this tutorial and I will teach you five Yorkshire dialect words just for the fun of it. But for now, let's go on to some junk journaling. Hello everyone, it's Helen from Journaling Planet and today I'm going to be upcycling some old tights, pantyhose, whatever you call them. These are some really nice ones from a company called Snag but unfortunately they had a hole in the toe so I've cut the toes off and now I'm going to see what I can do in terms of using them up. I know the colouring isn't exactly 1950s but the polka dot pattern made me think of sort of 1950s theme and I happen to have been given this book for Christmas which is a 1950s scrapbook. I asked for it specifically. I don't go out and buy things um, myself for my crafts uh, or at least I try to avoid it unless it's from a thrift store or Facebook marketplace or somewhere you know that's kind of eco-friendly Occasionally, I will support a small business and buy a one-off subscription box from them. I will be talking about who I do that with in the next video because I'm very, very selective. But as you can see, this amazing book has some absolutely fantastic images. And I'm going to be using some of them today um, since I got this as a gift and specifically asked for it for my craft. Uh, it is important that I do use it and I don't just hoard it, which of course would be <laughs> would be my preference given half a chance. So this is the second day of my 100 day project in which I take 100 pieces of junk or broken artifacts and turn them into something crafty and beautiful and today I'm going to have a go with these pantyhose. Obviously I'm not only ju just using these pantyhose or these tights, I am using other elements that are in my stash However, your tights won't look like mine. They may be black, they may be tan, they may be lacy, they may be sparkly. <laughs> so it would be a matter of you going to your stash and just looking for ways to incorporate this into your design, whatever design your pantyhose are. But for me, I want to go with a sort of 1950s theme because of the polka dots. So the first thing that I thought about this is that uh, this material could be used perfectly well as a way to top a tag. So I'm going to cut a strip, I'm going to make a tag, and I'm going to see how it looks. Okay, for complete transparency about what this, you know, tag is made of, it was a piece of envelope, the tag itself, and then I layered that with a piece of book page from the 1950s scrapbook, and I put a piece of brown envelope, just torn off, stamped it, inked around it. Again, from the 1950s scrapbook, I cut around this picture of our queen, who we should have said goodbye to, last year and then I topped it with the pantyhose. I really like the soft delicate fabric kind of draping over the imagery and I think that looks really really lovely. So you know how people always say oh I can't afford to buy ribbon, I can't afford to buy trim. You don't have to, you really don't have to. You can just cut up an old pair of tights once they've got a hole in them and let's be honest most of them get holes in them pretty quick. You can actually do this with any fabric. You could do it with a tea towel, you could do it with a bed sheet, you could do it with an old pillowcase, piece of pajamas. Anything you have can be cut down into strips to make a topper for a tag. So that's my first idea. My second idea was to use it a bit like cheesecloth on a journaling card. So I'm just going to cut down a bit of this envelope. Honestly, the day that I cut anything straight first time, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. So this is going to be a journaling card. I'm going to collage over it. I'm going to use some of my brown paper. I might use something from my scraps, my neutral scraps. And I'm going to use the um, pantyhose, a bit like cheesecloth. I might use a bit of my washi tape. Again, it would just be a matter of getting your pantyhose seeing what else was in your stash and kind of matching it to a theme. 
I'm sure you have at least a roll of washi, probably. Uh, if you don't, maybe you don't like using washi, that's fine. You probably have a book page or some paper. You probably have maybe a stamp or some inks. Whatever you've got, if you've got magazines that you cut up, whatever those are, just have a go at matching them to whatever um, your tights sort of suggest to you, okay? And amalgamate them into the collage. I'll show you how mine turns out.
okay, this does need to dry. <laughs> There's a lot going on. And it's actually a little bit raunchier than I was expecting uh, with that lady looking rather seductively up at the camera. Um, but I do really like this. It's uh, very full on, but I'm kind of okay with that. So uh, the texture of the pantyhose, I think, really does add something. I'm going to let the paint dry and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all set. For now, we're going to move on to the last idea, which is pantyhose pockets. So my idea for this is really just to take this old piece of envelope. It's a sturdy card envelope, but it's an envelope nonetheless. I'm going to cover it again with some of this paper and then what I want to do is essentially cover part of the length with the pantyhose and probably glue it around the back. I'll probably also put my sewing machine around it but I um, I think that you could get away with just gluing it and then the idea is that some things you can pop things in there when you're junk journaling. Let me see how I might go about this. Uh, I think I'm gonna do it the same way as if I was gluing a piece of paper and wrapping a piece of paper around. So I'm just gonna cut the corners off to start. I'm gonna cut the bottom off here. And corners off here and here. And now I'm just going to try and pull it tightly into place and glue it. Okay, that is in the process of setting. When it's dry, I'm going to go around the edge with some distress ink. I'm probably also going to sew around it just for safety, assuming my, ma my machine will go through the material at the back. And I will then show you what it looks like at the end so you can see all three pieces together. So just to recap what I've made using the tights or pantyhose, I have topped a tag, which was uh, made from things that have been gifted to me or scraps from my projects or reclaim materials, if you're gonna think about the back of the envelope. So that's one use. The other use is I used it as a background for this collage. And I'm really happy with how this has turned out. This looks super cool. And the last thing is this pocket, which just to prove that it works, we shall pop the tag in there. And with the tights being a bit see-through, um, you can also see what's in the pocket, which I think adds another dimension. I'm not really convinced that um, sewing around actually made that much difference. I don't think it's made much aesthetic difference and it was already holding tight with the fabric glue. So maybe it'll be slightly longer lasting, but on a sort of immediate level, I don't think sewing around added anything. I think you could just do it with fabric glue. So. I do like the idea of using these as pockets. I have enjoyed using them as backgrounds for collage and topping of tags, but I think my main lesson that I'm taking away from this is if I have old tights or pantyhose in my drawer that are holy and need cutting up, I don't need to buy cheesecloth. Cheesecloth I've seen quite a few other crafters use on YouTube and it's been on my list of things to try and find in thrift stores and I've never come across it. And I've realised that now actually I don't need to. I can just use old pairs of tights and that is going to do the same kind of texture job as cheesecloth. So I'm very excited by that discovery because it just means that I can now go ahead and start cutting up what's left of the pantyhose and using them in various collage pieces, maybe make a couple more pockets and also keep some strips to top tags. So I do think this is a super fun, light fabric to do that with. I hope this tutorial has been interesting. Obviously this is my 100 day project and it is about using up reclaim materials wherever possible, recycling and upcycling. And until I found this massive hole in my tights, I never thought about using them. But then I was like, they're fabric. Why on earth would I just throw those away? 
and now I know I never will again. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was inspiring and I look forward to seeing you next time. So as promised, here are the five Yorkshire dialect terms that will see you through any trip to Yorkshire or any conversation with a Yorkshire person. I now live in the northeast of England in Sunderland, but I am born and bred a Yorkshire lass. So here are my five pieces of dialect that everybody needs to know. Number one, E. Yeah, that's right. Extending the E vowel sound is deemed very important communication in Yorkshire. It can mean, oh my God, like E, have you seen them? Or it can just signal the start of a sentence. E, you'll never guess what happened. Number two, give over. It means stop it or quit it or pack it in. Give over, will you? Stop teasing me. Very important if someone's starting to raise your hackles, that one. Number three, snicket. A snicket is a small cut through or perhaps a row of hedges that you can kind of walk through and it cuts off a big corner in the middle of town and it kind of saves you a long walk round. So are you going to be late for our meeting at two? No, it's all right. I'm going to go down and snick it. Number four, put wood in hole or put the wood in the hole to those of you who don't come from Yorkshire. It just means close the door. Obviously, what else would it mean? You're putting wood in a hole. You're closing a door. Really easy. Number five is very specific to my hometown of Thirsk, which is famous for the author James Herriot. Yes, I'm sorry, there is a more famous author that comes from my hometown than me, <laughs> but I'm working on it. This last one can mean, are you okay, or hello, or both, or either, okay? And it's simply the words, now then. Someone will come up to you in Thirsk and say, now then. And it simultaneously means, hello, how are you? If they're feeling like you might not get that, they might say, now then, all right, to make it sure that you understand that you're asking, how are you, as well as hello. So those are my five pieces of Yorkshire dialect. I hope you found it educational and entertaining. See you next time for the next Junk Journal tutorial.